Today we begin a week-long series of reports on the status of public education in Colorado, how good it is, what makes it work, and how it might be changed for the better. Thirteen Nine News reporters were assigned specific topics involving public education. Some of them have been working on the reports for the past two months. For our first report, Rick Salinger was enrolled as a high school student. We selected what we consider to be a typical suburban high school, representative of any number of schools in the Denver area. Salinger spent two and a half weeks as a student at Aurora Central. The school administration, faculty, and students all knew who he was and why he was there. Rick tells us what it was like to go back after being out of high school for so many years. It was the mid-60s when I went to high school back in the Chicago area. The music was Herman's Hermits. The hairstyles neat. The clothing, well, let's just say girls wore dresses. That's me, class of 67. And now, 14 years later, back to high school, they say, Aurora Central. For the next two and a half weeks, I'm a Trojan. Well, there's a big difference right there. Class rings. $25 when I was a student, now 100 to 150. No time to look though, I'm late for class. That's Mrs. Foster, my enriched American history teacher. Don't know her first name. In fact, I don't think teachers have them. It's okay, don't get excited, I have a pass. My computerized attendance card though was already placed for pickup. See, each week they send your parents a form telling them how many classes you ditched or were tardy for. I found out a lot of kids are getting to the mail, though, before they're folks and tearing them up. Anyway, this Mrs. Foster's pretty strict. Makes you think, though. If the kids do well enough, they can take a test to get history credits in college. Boy, these hallways are crowded. Ten minutes between class, though. It's like... Everyone here wears a uniform these days, you know. Blue jeans, tennis shoes, and t-shirts. Well, there are exceptions. The punk rockers. Why do you dress like that? Because I wanted to be different. That's all. Talk about different. My next period is Chinese class. Can you believe that? Never offered that back in the 60s. Good thing, too. I'm not too good at this. A lot of the students in here are Vietnamese. Nice people, but they kind of stick to themselves. Don't associate with the other students a lot. Between classes, this is a pretty popular area. It's really 10th Avenue in Aurora, and everyone at Central calls it Freak Street. You're allowed to smoke here. In fact, the school even put out ashtrays, but most of the kids don't use them. Freak Street's a good place to just stand around and talk about school and the importance of grades. If you had a choice between learning a lot or getting a good grade, realistically, which would you take? Realistically? Good grade. Good grade. Good. Showing my parents what I can do. The only way you get a good grade is to learn anyways. It's the day before the first big football game. This is our pep assembly. I can't believe it. You actually have a choice if you want to come to this or skip class. Lot did skip, but the stands were mostly filled. School spirit was pretty good, I'd say, even if they did have to pass out the words to Mr. Trojan, the school song. This is my PE class, weightlifting. You can actually choose what PE course you take. I guess that's one of the biggest changes these days, the variety of choice. And look, it's a co-ed class. I couldn't believe it. Why would girls take weightlifting? Just want to get in shape. To walk all the guys with all. <laughs> Do you think it's unfeminine for a girl to lift weights? No, I think if guys collect them, I think girls collect them too. I really do. Makes sense, I guess. And now the thing about PE, no uniforms these days. Just wear what you want, within reason. Well, this is sure the same as before. It seems a high school student's first car is as important to him as his self-esteem. Guess that's why auto shop is a pretty popular course. That guy there, he knows all the answers to the teacher's questions. They call him Mr. Goodwrench. Says all his friends are motorheads. Lunchtime, this is the cafeteria. What a madhouse. Long lines, 
85 cents for a lunch ticket, or you can buy a la carte. Is the food good? Let me be nice and say, sometimes. But let's ask someone else. Do I have to be honest? What do you think of the food? It's terrible. <laughs> a lot of the black kids seem to sit by themselves. But I gotta say, as far as the school goes, with 10 to 15 percent minorities, the races mix and get along pretty well. Some kids get free lunch tickets from the government, and they got a little scam going. What do you do with your lunch tickets? I sell them. For how much? Hmm. Three, four dollars, something like that. It doesn't really matter. A lot of kids spend their money here. This is the Starship. It's a video game hangout. You can go anywhere during lunch, and while you transport your mind to outer space here, put me in the right mood for my next class. What if we learned to decode brain waves and read each other's minds? What if we discovered a way to live forever? This is science fiction class where we watch a lot of film strips and read a lot of books. Never had that in English back in the 60s. But it makes sense, though. Mr. Nykirk's the teacher. It prepares kids for the world in which they're going to live. And very few of our courses do that. Most look to the past and see what we can learn from the past. This deals with problems that they're going to face in the future. A problem of now is drugs. We ask these students to let us photograph them smoking marijuana away from the campus. We agreed to protect their identities, even though the use of so drugs is something dope. that's readily so acknowledged I here. Dope. I smoked dope before I even started coming. So do I, yeah. <laughs> Last school year, Aurora Central hallways included narcotics detectives posing as students. It was one of several Aurora schools involved in the police program. This student was one of those arrested. I, the I don't think they should even be involved in the schools. You don't feel it like you've got no freedom. It makes you, you feel don't... like there's no trust between you and the teacher faculty. That is true. But from what I saw and heard, the use of drugs here is down from past years, and the percentage of students that use them at school appears low. Maybe one reason why is a tough policy. Although drug paraphernalia may be legal according to the courts, if you're caught with it in school, it is an automatic suspension. Nowadays, it's hard to tell the paraphernalia from the fashions. Rick is back with us. He's uh, traded in his... Uh designer jeans for his pinstripes. <laughs> How are you accepted by the kids? I'd say at first they were kind of cool to me, but then I put on the uh, jeans and the t-shirt and was tardy for a couple classes. And all of a sudden I was one of them. Did you light up the tires on your car in the parking lot oh, no. while you were <laughs> in there? What are your general impressions after having gone back to school, after, after being out of school for 15 years or so? What, uh, what did it feel like? I have to admit that I went into it with a lot of preconceptions. I expected uh, the drug problem to be much worse than it is. Mm -hmm. I was amazed at the amount of freedom that you have in choosing your classes and what you can wear and where you can go even while during the day. Uh, but overall, I'd say the main things are still the same. The kids are basically interested in getting through their classes and being accepted by their friends. Right. Thank you, Rick. Okay. Well, this is sure the same as before. It seems a high school student's first car is as important to him as his self-esteem. I guess that's why auto shop is a pretty popular course. That guy there, he knows all the answers to the teacher's questions. They call him Mr. Goodwrench. He says all his friends are motorheads. That guy there, he knows all the answers to the teacher's questions. They call him Mr. Goodwrench. He says all his friends are motorheads. That guy there, he knows all the answers to the teacher's questions. They call him Mr. Goodwrench. That guy there, he knows all the answers to the teacher's questions. They call him Mr. Goodwrench. Mr. Goodwrench. He knows all the answers to the teacher's questions. They call him Mr. Goodwrench. Gee, Mr. Goodwrench, I don't know. It's going. Kathum, 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 kathum. Yeah. Mr. Goodwrench understands your GM car. He has special GM training and GM equipment available to help him analyze your car and diagnose the problem. No more thump. Thanks. Keep that great GM feeling. Mr. Goodwrench? With genuine GM parts. I understand. <laughs>